What if everything that you held to be true was somehow, in some way, wrong? I'm Dr. Mark Halloran, and you're listening to Deep Trouble. Well, we talked about some potential textual problems in terms of the, the religious texts themselves within the Quran, and I know we talked about um, Surah Al-Nisa, um, 434, we've already spoken about yeah. that in the previous interview, so we don't have to really labour the point about that. I feel as though we kind of, like I said, I have my own view that this is like any kind of text. You, you, There are certain things that even as a religious person you might say that's interpreted as a time and place. So my, my example is in Leviticus in terms of um, prosecution of, of people for being homosexual. So you find two men in a homosexual act, but you know, I think you need two witnesses mm. and it has to be tried by the Sanhedrin. Well, Sanhedrin hasn't mm. existed for 2,000 years, so it has never really been tried. And it's not even sure how often it was, if ever, tried before that because the principles that you need to lead up to that are so difficult that... Uh, mm. Yeah. Whether it actually, sure. but, but, the, but, my, but the point I did yeah, want to talk to you okay. about was was this. So in Surah and Nisa, not not the point that it leads into, um, but it starts off with men have authority over women because God has made one superior to the other, and because they spend their wealth to maintain them. Good women are obedient; they guard their unseen parts because God has guarded them. As for those who fear disobedience, admonish them, forsake them in their beds, and beat them. And it changes like with softly or with, Mm. that's not the point we need to talk about. Then if they obey, take no further action. Surely that as a a verse in modern times, anywhere in the world is problematic Mm. in terms of its interpretation. Men have authority over women because God has made one superior to the other. Mm. Yeah, it it doesn't look good. uh, Like when you look at it from uh, the Western Uh, paradigm. That's taken out as well. So, I mean... When we talk about this, there'll be a second part of the question I talk about. That, sure. Yeah. But I, I'm not shying away from, uh, I mean, I'm happy to go in detail on that verse. Yeah. But I just want to uh, lay out what I said earlier. How do we approach a text like this? Yes. In my view, as I laid out, my approach method is look at them in their own right without yeah. taking in what we have today. Sure. Women's rights and whether that looks sounds bad or not. Um just, just look at and see what it's trying to say to us uh, in terms of... Uh, and then uh, once with that understanding, look at it today. Right. I'll, put, I'll give you another, uh, sa- another saying by Prophet Muhammad, which is not Quran, but Hadith. Uh, he, said, he said, if uh, a man and a woman should not be in the same place, in a covered place together... That they should not be alone in a room, let's yes. say. And look, if you look at this, we can say, oh, how backward is it? Is it? Uh, it just doesn't give space to women and, and so on. Uh, b- because we, we bring with it our modern paradigm into reading that text. Mm. But if what now, for example, things have changed after the Me, Me Too movement, where uh, a lot of corporate men, CEOs and, uh, and managers are saying, I'm never going to sit w- with a woman in the same room alone again. Mm. They, because they, co- they, they also encounter quite a lot of criticism for uh, that as well. Yeah, I, they do, but they, you, can see, uh, you can see why they're saying it, right? Because yes. they don't want to risk themselves for accusation of sexual harassment because yes. the laws are today such that if a woman claims to sexual harassment, uh, you have to believe her. And unless... It's proven. Well, uh, I'm not saying I'm not uh, saying these things are right or wrong. No, I wasn't going to say whether yeah. you said they were yeah. wrong. I was going to say that I don't think the law does do. I don't think the law does do that. It's still see the laws are generally. I'm not a lawyer, but I've got a friend who's a lawyer. They're crimes against the state. So if it was say it was a serious sexual assault or rape or something like that, when it's prosecuted as a crime against the state, not against the victim, and they're trying to sort of change that, and they're changing the way that. Uh, the evidence is gathered and how you can cross-examine the witness and all that sort of thing. Uh, Sure, um, but but if there is a doubt or if it's about his word against her word... You're talking about the the social... The bias is towards... uh, It's it's better to err on the side of the woman than better to err on the side of the man. And then the 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 matters are taken 
and more significantly, uh, the victim, uh, let's say a woman, is kept, uh, yes. her identity is not revealed, but the identity of the accused is revealed, and that yes. destroys their career. Yes. Even before we saw it with, the, what's his name, the, in Australia, the, the actor, uh, what's his name? Uh, J John Jarrett. Ja John Jarrett. We Gosh. saw in his case, he was exonerated, right, yes. uh, by the courts. Yes. But his reputation is destroyed. Yes, so that's, that's a uh, separate thing. There's I know. There is uh, an issue in terms of the, the court of social opinion yeah. now because people okay. have so much access to it but that's a look that's I don't have strong views on these things yes. but, but I just merely raised it because uh, what the when when the social context changes yes uh, then all of a sudden this advice that you get from the prophet Muhammad seems really appropriate yes uh, to at least some men right and but I, I would go actually further and to say that uh, that saying protects women you can look at it from that. You can say, if if there is a situation like a man and a woman are together in the same room, and that it's a patriarchal society, yes. there's more chance that the woman would be harassed, right. and that men can get away with it. This is what happens in Japan. There was a yes. documentary about that. Yes. Uh, now, uh, so so the prophet basically is saying there, when you when you look at it in its own right, and with. And then with the context, we kind of see the wisdom in that, what yes. he's saying. That's, w that's what I'm saying. I'm, yes. So I'm saying that we, we should approach these, these texts yes. uh, cause, um, without uh, really not be judgmental about it initially. Yes. And let's read it in its own context and look at it as, is this saying something? What is this saying? We, maybe with well intention as well. Is this saying anything about protection of women, women and women, protection of rights? Because in my b belief, Quran is ultimately there to protect the rights of people. Right. Like when you really read into its ethical and legal guidelines, yes. which is not too many, like you would probably say, uh, strictly speaking, Quran has 70, 80 verses that are strictly legal. Right. Maybe if you extend that to 700 verses, you could include the principles that operate as well. Um, out of 6,238 verses. Right? Yes. So, so Quran is largely a theological book. Uh, its concern is more giving a message to human beings about their salvation on earth and in afterlife. And, yes. You know, uh, so, uh, like, uh, having said that, um, uh, it needs to be read in its own right. And I think when you do, w when I read the verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 34, from yes. the perspective of what is this telling me about rights of men and women? Because Quran itself says, right. you know, men have rights over women and women have rights over men. Right. You know, in other verses. Well, in the, and the, this says, though, this, this specific... And I, I hate to yeah. kind of... No, no, it's know, okay. But, but I'm, I'm just saying that it seems a difficult one to interpret. And, and I would say that... You know, like most religious texts, in terms of the way that scholars approach it, is that there's going to be massive, there's massive contradictions sure. across the Gospels and the Torah and things like that. And they, then they say, well, let's look at the this verse might say that, this verse might say yeah. this. What's the weight of evidence? But it seems like it would, it's a problematic verse because people would say sure. that it underlies some of the things that you see in theocracies like Iran and the treatment of the mm. Taliban towards sure. women and things Look, like uh, that. Look, verse, definitely verses like this could be uh, used to justify abuse of women. Yes. Uh, and I definitely agree with that. Yeah. But I don't, I th I don't think that's the intent of the verses, though. Right. Like, like, if, like if I believe that this verse is ruled by God, yes. certainly God's not going to choose between men and women and and uh, well it depends and, and on the mindset doesn't it, it it depends on the human's mindset yeah. not god's mindset yeah so that's why i i, I look at all oh, the the advice that we get like when i studied the the key thing that we were taught yes in interpreting the quran is you don't you don't engage it with what you intend yes. you, you need to search for the intent of the creator right and the creator does not distinguish between his creation. How, how do uh, you get? How do you feel as though you get to the intent of the creator? Well, uh, by uh, removing your own subjectivity. Like, right. th like with that, obviously, you never know what the intent of the creator is. No. 
and you have to engage with the text in that. But that allows you, that forces you n not uh, to be as objective as right. possible. Now, in uh, that keyword, let's uh, let's take the keyword qawamun, which is translated there with four or five words in yes. the translation you got. Uh, it's just a single word. Right. It does indicate uh, uh, to be kind of like one step ahead, to be strong. It really means to be strong. Right. Uh, now, let's take, uh, you go back to society, 7th century once again, uh, a hunter-gatherer society. Like Humanity yes. lived in hunter-gatherer for, for hundreds of thousands it's of incredibly years. Incredibly harsh environments. Uh, yeah, and, and there the man has to, be, uh, like I understand that, w that the word kawaman to mean that man is not intrinsically superior to woman, but yes. man should be. In a marriage, in a, a marriage rel uh, relationship, man should be uh, a step stronger mm. uh, to give stability to the family. To actually, we know that women prefer like men who are emotionally strong, mm. and uh, they actually choose women uh, that have that kind of display strength mm. uh, in terms of you know partner, marriage, whatever. Yes. Uh, well, so. Uh, because uh, like a woman could be at, like the biggest fear of a woman is harassment. When we talk threat. about strong, we sometimes I mean I think people talk about that. Well, it depends on the researcher and the research, but they talk about competence and things like that. That's well, in our time, that reflects in terms of comp competence, but in you know agrarian societies, it meant that men could fix things and he can go and work. Sometimes in jobs that jobs that he doesn't like, yes, and uh, and come and provide for the family, right. which was the harder job, yes. Uh, and and women had a difficult job as well. They they lost their kids and 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 so on. Uh, you know a lot very often. But both genders had difficulty. Uh, but in terms of the, it was a little bit more like the Quran is not saying absolute or men are so superior beings that, you know, they uh, outshine women, right. just a, a degree stronger. Right. And I, I read that as men should be like that, or they, right. they should try to be like that uh, for the benefit of the family, for the benefit of the relationship. I mean, you may disagree with that once again <laughs> from fine, the yeah. paradigm of today's gender, you know, politics fourth and gender wave paradigms. Feminism. Yeah, all yeah. those third way, fourth way feminism. Yeah. But I personally see in that a lot of wisdom. Right. And uh, and the way I explain that verse, to, when I explain it this way to men, mm -hmm. Muslim men, they say, oh, yeah. They, they, they all of a sudden feel like a man. And, right. and they feel responsible. That's a positive thing. Yeah, that's a positive They feel like responsibility, that. which comes naturally to right. men, to provide, to protect the, the family. Yes. Uh, uh, and and obviously, you know, that kind of responsibility also brings with, with it some certain rights. Yes. Just as uh, women, you know, they fulfill very important role in a relationship and marriage, and they have rights. Right. Uh, yeah. So uh, in that sense, I don't see anything wrong with that verse. Right. If you understand it this way, yes. obviously, if you understand it to mean, ah, oh, yeah, we men, we do have. Uh, you know, we are born. Uh, we we born with far superior things. Yeah. Uh, 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 you know, we would be mistaken. I personally think, actually, this is one of my. I'm, I'm thinking of working on a new work, and I've got three project ideas, and one of them is yes. uh, gender theory in Islam. I, I, we don't have a gen proper modern gender theory in Islam, right. uh, and a kind of gender theory that, uh, once again, applies the method that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. The, the, a lot of the, a lot of the material that we get today is either influenced by traditionalism or even feminism. There's right. a lot of feminist thought. So there's feminist Islam as well, isn't there? Uh, yeah, feminist Islamic and, thought. And, and Muslim women are quite feminist, <laughs> right? And uh, maybe rightly so because they have suffered under traditionalism, or they continue to suffer some of that. Yes. Uh, uh, and uh, you know, I support them for that, uh, but. Uh, when we talk about Islam or Islam says this, yes, we have to be very careful and especially interpreting the, t the text. I, I feel that there should be a serious study of, of 
proper gender theory should be developed uh, uh, with, with a proper methodology.